only cheap makeup but this happy fool is mesmerized this happy fool is hypnotized Stardust falling from your eyes, softly drifting down. Beauty's song is amplified. Beauty. Tune is amplified. Just arrived to say goodbye. You just arrived to say When the world changed and went into lockdown, my place of solace was at the top of a hill in the country, a long way from the road trips and gigs and more road trips and more gigs. It didn't take long before I was missing it all. No one could go more than two kilometers from their home, so with only mountains as an audience, I started to do what I do, uh, play music. At first, it felt like singing into a void, but it made everything feel a little more normal, whatever that is, was, and or will be. These concerts were my postcards from the edge, my way of expressing myself and singing the body electric. And it turned out that while I was out in the wilderness, I wasn't the only one feeling this way. People would respond with their messages, requesting songs, saying hello to loved ones in a foreign land sharing stories of joy and sadness. It's this experience and these postcards from the edge that have inspired this new program. I can't speak for everyone, but I'm ready to get out, to meet people again, to chat, and find out how they got on and what got them through. That's what this show is all about, meeting real people and sharing their stories. And of course, there will be lots of music and crack along the way. Welcome, one and all, to Postcards from the Edge. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you're all doing well and are all having a good week. That opening song was one of my own called Stardust, you may know it, a very popular one live. And shortly I'll be singing a Bowie classic. So keep hitting the like buttons and uh, keep sharing, the, sharing this with your friends. Uh, and just a reminder that tickets are now on sale for the three arena gig. So take a look at this. I think we have some promo for that. I'm the king of Soho. Soho. I'm so far gone that it seems like home. Alleluia.
Well, there you have it. Now, tonight's show is all about diversity and inclusion. We are live right now, so uh, don't wait. Get in touch. Send us your comments. We are live. On, uh, we'll show you how to get in touch now. Have a look at this. Hi, this is Jack Lukeman, and I'm looking for your pandemic stories for my new web show, Postcards from the Edge. Please send me your poems, songs, messages, videos, or even just a request digitally. Tag your content online with hashtag JackLPostcards or send a message to any of the accounts shown here. To post your postcards free of charge, send them to Postcards from the Edge, P.O. Box 13420, Free Post, FDN 7530, Dublin 2. together we can beat them forever and ever we can be heroes just for so one day what you say now can swim and nothing try the way we can beat them just for one day we can be heroes just for one day what you say now
It got me back on the road to, to, to Manshed and uh, oh, I would have been lost without it now, to be honest with you, you know. Everybody who comes to Shed will tell you something different about what the Shed does for you, but for me, it's, it's made me smile again. So last week we tried to chat with Enda Egan, head of the Irish Men's Shed Association, but he had a power cut. So I'm delighted to say he is live with me in the studio now. Hi Enda, lovely to finally meet you. Hey Jack, great to be here. Thank Thanks you. for coming, yeah. And tell us all about Men's Shed Association, what it's all about. Yeah, so the Men's Shed concept started off in Australia and it came to Ireland in about 2009 or thereabouts uh, and it literally exploded uh, right across the country. Uh, so we have 360 sheds in the Republic of Ireland, a further 90 in the north, uh, and we have more sheds uh, per head of capita in Ireland than we have in any other country in the world. Um, so the, the men's shed concept is where men come together in a shed. Uh, you don't have to have any particular skills. Uh, some people think you know you have to be good at woodwork or good at metalwork. That's not the case. There is something for everybody in the shed and all are welcome. And uh, tell us uh, how the sheds were impacted by COVID uh, and how uh, were you able to pivot on that? Yeah, look, COVID's had a huge impact. Sheds were closed all over the country, um, huge loss of camaraderie and friendship mm. for, for men. Uh, and uh, one of the things we noticed was that, you know, loneliness before COVID, men reported in the sheds at around 1.2%. And then during COVID, that went up to almost 40%. So it just gives you an indication of how important the shed is uh, for, for men. Um, Sheds did loads of kind of different things. You know, there's a shed up in Hollywood in County Down uh, and it got involved in this local forest and it made an enchanted garden for, um, you know, kids with, with special needs. And it, one of the great things about it was it consulted with those kids and the families. Uh, and what you have there is, is a sensory garden that the whole community is now involved in. Uh, and it was very important to the men because the community often donated loads of, of say, tools and, and funding and that for the shed. So they got a great opportunity to, to give back. And uh, we have a shed over in Stranford Lock, it's that little uh, peninsula that sticks out there in County Antrim, a lovely part of the country. Um, and they grew a lot of vegetables and stuff in their own garden because they have a garden around the shed. Uh, and uh, they were able to give that out to uh, elderly people that lived on their own. So loads of sheds tried to do different kind of things, but it was all about the men coming together outside of the shed, obviously when they could do so with public health guidelines. 
Yeah, it's, it really is community based, which is the fantastic thing about it. And uh, what other uh, shedders is that a word? Would you call yourself shedders? That what did you uh, do to help out where needed? Uh, I mean, the vegetables and stuff would have been uh, one aspect of it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. So, so I suppose the men in the sheds generally uh, get known as shedders, and that's the kind of international sort of term uh, that's that's used. Yeah. So loads of things. I think um, you know one of the important things was to try and keep that sort of friendship going keep the connections going um, lots of, of men got into using things like WhatsApp and using social media uh, and things that they would never have been involved in before you know Zoom calls WhatsApp calls uh, and trying to keep that connection all the time and meeting up throughout uh, where they could outside uh, the shed down in in uh, Hollywood in, in uh, sorry Roundwood in County Wicklow and they consider themselves to be the, the highest shed in uh, Ireland so they, right. they're quite elevated down there over that and uh, uh, I think when they added up all their ages together one day when they were outside sitting on the park bench they realized that there was over a thousand years of knowledge between them all so they kind of called themselves the google shed because they reckon any question you want to know they're able to answer it <laughs> that's brilliant yeah so uh, so you were kind of in virtual sheds during that yeah the exactly anything just to try and keep the contact going mm. between between men and and like the average age of men in the sheds is around 69 mm -hmm. um, and the shed is really important at that point of transition in a person's life when they're going from maybe being retired sorry to, from from working to to retirement and for many people I suppose their job represents who they are and suddenly you know on a Friday you finish your job and on a Monday you're, you're lost you know uh, and uh, so the shed is really important at, a, at any point in, in that kind of transition uh, in a person's life you know. Yeah well this week's show is all about diversity and inclusion so uh, can you maybe tell us about the various types of characters you get in and also are there women's sheds? Yeah so I suppose the, the, the values of the shed concept is all built on inclusion and equality and honesty and the one thing that I can genuinely say uh, around the sheds is that no one cares who you are, you come as you are like the Nirvana song, you turn up uh, and you're accepted as, as, as that and you know there, there, there is the, the kind of I suppose you know view out there that men don't really talk about kind of personal issues or about health issues or whatever um, but when you put men together building you know a bench for example for for a local tidy towns group you know suddenly after half an hour everyone working on that knows a lot of stuff about each other which they probably wouldn't have talked about if they were sitting like us here in chairs looking at each other you know mm -hmm. so when when men come together uh, you know with a common kind of purpose um, they, they really start to open up and they make great friendships and um, everybody's welcome it doesn't matter about or uh, you know what nationality you're from what religion you are what color you are no one cares in the shed everyone's accepted and there's a role for everybody and there's women's sheds too so yeah there's thir about 30 women's sheds around right. there and that's that's something that's still is starting to grow and starting to, starting to expand yeah fantastic and uh, as regards the effects of covid uh, how will it affect you maybe going forward? Yeah, I mean, I suppose the real sad part of this is that we uh, would have real concerns that about 50, 55 sheds around the country that might not open up after COVID. Um, and there's a couple of reasons for this. For, for some sheds, I suppose, you know, um, funding generation is all around say fundraising events for many sheds a lot of their bills like 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 rent kept going over covid uh, so unfortunately there are some financial issues but some of the key things are that you know some of the real leaders in some sheds uh, may not be in a position to come back because unfortunately they're like two years older now and for some for health reasons outside of covid uh, you know they just haven't the, the 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 ability maybe to come back and be involved in the shed and so you know one of the things we really have to do after COVID is get new members involved in the sheds, get people to realise, you know, that there's a shed nearby, that you don't have to be good with your hands, you know, you can just come along to the shed and there's loads of things to do, you know, the, the most important tool in, in the shed is a kettle and some sheds have two or three kettles, you know, so there's a role for everybody. Absolutely brilliant. I, the concept is fantastic, it really is. And uh, the best of luck for it. Thanks, Enda, for Thank making you. it this week. We didn't have any power cuts, thank God. And we wish you all the best. Thank Make you. sure to check out the website, menshed.ie, to learn more. So, um, so thanks a million, Enda. And as you know, we've been uh, spotlighting various up-and-coming musicians and hearing their postcards from the edge. This week is the turn of the X Collective, People, strength, connection, togetherness, belonging. These are the things that make a community. 
And this is a group of artists who are diverse in their particular art form and what they have to offer, uh, but alike in their itch to create and collaborate. Uh, this is what makes the X Collective, and this is their postcard. X Collective is the brainchild of myself and Emily. Um, Emily's background would be in promotion and mine would be in live music. So I guess that we had a lot of similar ideas um, and this would have been maybe just before the pandemic. No, how, how long were we working maybe? Six or seven months before? So yeah, I guess in that time we had a lot of circles that kind of knew each other. So it was just a matter of bringing those circles together. And I guess that was how it all began. This is not about you. So the idea behind it was pitched to us that it's a collective, that it offers opportunity for our band or our artists to cross collaborate, gig, and essentially just create yeah, like a, a network of other musicians that are like-minded, not strictly alike in terms of sound, but able to collaborate in interesting ways and, and produce music and creative things that would be beneficial to everybody. Um, so the collective would be a community genre-wise based around pop, R&B, neo soul, jazz, funk, hip hop, and I guess we were looking to establish a platform that highlighted those specific genres in Ireland because our goal is essentially the same. All of us want to go in a certain direction musically. So when you have other people there to actually help you out, then it just the journey is much easier. Yeah, there, it's essentially a community of creatives as well, not just musicians. Um, different types of creatives, videographers, photographers, um, directors, graphic designers. So it's a bunch of creatives and it's like the full product of the song essentially from start to finish. I think such a great like emphasis on community, knowing that you have people there that are going to back you, that are going to cheer for you, and even for you to feel like you're cheering for other people, that it's not just a, you're in isolation, I'm an artist in Ireland, but you are part of something bigger and that you can see the potential for growth within other people and within yourself. It's, yeah, it's great to be part of. This is ascension. I think it works really well, actually. Um, everybody seems open to collaborate, open to ideas. Um, and people that we wouldn't have connected with out, outside of the collective that we wouldn't have, you know, thought to ask to collaborate. Um, we've kind of been working with people like that and it's been a really, really enjoyable experience, I think. Nobody was gigging anywhere, so going over to anyone's house, you couldn't leave outside of your, what was it, how many kilometers? Five kilometers? So that wasn't a possibility in terms of like keeping everyone in their bubbles. But what we did do was we, I think it was myself, well, well I know it was myself and Tyler McKay, um, we did a song together where I was in Berlin riding there, she was in Dublin, there was another girl in a different part of Germany, and um, like we wrote that song entirely virtually, in fact, those artists have never met one another and they're on the same song, so, and it's the same with um, the videographer, the animator, they were in different parts of Europe, so it just forces us to be like, okay, we can't use our immediate circle of people that we always use, so who can we use? And, then we found that everyone actually is really hungry to create right now and to collaborate and to stay connected because when you're at home by yourself all the time that energy can be stagnant and when you're not getting stimulation from your surrounding areas then it's like where do I go to, who do I reach out to so naturally that kept myself and Emily extremely busy. <laughs> Well, within the collective, uh, hopefully we can continue to collaborate with folks and make more music. You know, we, we wrote a uh, good amount of material and um, I think it's really good and I'm looking forward to having, you know, actual audiences see that. I'm, as a, you know, just a fan of music, I'm looking forward to seeing all of, the, all of my fellow members perform. I think the pandemic in a way as well helped us all to upskill. Well, certainly like for myself and Emily, we had to upskill in many different areas. 
and it, it all just came naturally. Um, but yeah, that would have been like a huge benefit to learn new things um, alongside other people during the pandemic. I think without the pandemic, like launching some launching a new project is really hard, and being ex expecting it to go really well straight away. So it kind of get like it took the pressure off of not needing to gig every weekend and not needing to release immediately and just working behind the scenes and being able to create um, and now I think we're in a better position to actually in the next few months like officially start putting stuff out mm -hmm. um, so it's like it'll be our official <laughs> launch of stuff. You know having that community was an outlet towards connecting with people that you know of on a more personal level and then I think the pandemic in itself probably also just made a lot more artists like humble and, and open towards having that conversation being like hey really like what you do have you ever thought of you know, doing X, Y, and Z. So it was like the perfect platform in which those really honest and kind of, um, yeah, just like more humble conversations can happen and, and where the work can come out of it too. And when things get too much, you like to hide. It really helped me. Um, just music is kind of my outlet and my thing, my kind of way to express myself. And um, I didn't have that uh, during the pandemic or in lockdown and stuff like that. Um, so being able to have this, this collective and have so many projects and so many goalposts to work towards really work for me because I, I need that kind of thing. I think people don't necessarily always realise like how yeah lonely and like difficult the challenging I guess being an artist can be because you're learning something that's uh, most of your circle or your family or your friends have no idea about. It's hard to relate to them sometimes about your struggles or your you know, it's like oh you're a musician, you're doing great, everything's fine. Yeah, like oh that must be so fun. But it comes with its own set of like ridiculous challenges, crazy hurdles and really difficult naturally as a musician and your livelihood is gone. And then you're like, well, what am I supposed to do here? So we were just like, let's just keep on making these opportunities for ourselves. And hopefully if we do something right, then, you know, people will, will respond. And, and we're lucky enough that it, we've been getting a great response so far. So. Ladies and gentlemen, get up for Roshin Donahue. She's going to sing this one with me. Please, a round of applause. <laughs> Open your borders and your head and your heart. Exmwyn a fwyt an I smell them thing I need to find someone to help me clean them up Time will take its toll on a homeless soul You become love's refugee So open your borders and let me in I don't want to climb no barbed wire or battlements. Open your borders, just give the order. Open your borders and let me Life gets short Hearts start growing cold If you remain alone You gotta take a chance You gotta get up and dance You know the song So open your borders And let me in No need for my Just give me a open your 
All you need is love you. Thanks to Roisin. That was uh, a joy to sing. Sounding fabulous. Now please, will you welcome my next guest, Philippa Ryder, who is joining us hopefully virtually. Are you there? I believe I am indeed, Jack. And thank you very much for having me al along. And thanks to the team as well. well. This is my first ever virtual interview, so... Uh, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll start with this one. Uh, uh, so can you tell us a little bit about um, your journey and why you helped to form Under the Rainbow? Well, I was invited along to a breakfast one um, morning in about 2019, early 2019. And it was a good friend of mine, Dermot McCarthy, um, who introduced me to a friend of his. They're both psychotherapist counsellors. And um, we had a chat. We discussed the fact that we were all being asked to, to do talks and to do presentations around the whole field of diversity, inclusion and equity. And from that breakfast meeting, Under the Rainbow was born. And a couple of weeks later, we had an office in Cable Street and we just basically grew from there and it was um it, it's a pleasure to be involved in it because i feel like we provide an amazing service and how did you continue to support your clients during the pandemic um well we have two aspects to under the rainbow one is the therapy center where the clients come in and they discuss their issues their problems their men basically their mental health and with the with the clients and with the pandemic obviously we couldn't do face to face it was too risky well it wasn't allowed for a lot of the time and even when it became possible we decided to stay more or less completely online because we were finding that people were actually embracing the online environment it gave us a lot more I suppose it gave us a lot more capability to see more patients or patients, I shouldn't say patients, but clients. And it's worked out very well. And the other side of the of Under the Rainbow is the diversity, inclusion and equity training that we deliver to the corporate, uh, to government and to community. And that has been a godsend in a way to be able to do this by Zoom or by Teams, as I'm talking to you tonight, that, that has been brilliant because it's allowed us to reach a much wider audience. And uh, we have benefited a lot in a way from the pandemic, but also it means that you lose the buzz of the live performance. And that sounds funny if you're doing training or talks or whatever, but I mean, you gave a great performance there, Jack. And I'm sure if you were stuck in a room on your own and just performing over Zoom, it's there's no fun. There's no there's no excitement to it. And that's the way we feel about the about the talks that we deliver. But it does enable us to talk to people all over the world, you know? Yeah. Well, I managed to I, I found a way of making the old Zoom live thing in a room on our own <laughs> work in some respect. This is an evolution of it. Can you tell us a little bit about the maps behind you? Because uh, it's a fantastic background you have. Yeah, thanks. I'm my other job is as a civil servant and I've worked in the property registration authority for 40 years. So I'm retiring next year. Yippee. And <laughs> thank you. And uh, so I work as a digital uh, mapping person um, I'm a qualified surveyor as well and I just have a passion for maps so you've got Ireland you've got Turin you've got Paris you've got um, 
yeah, a couple of other nice, nice maps there as well. And it's just, I do really appreciate the cartography, the the effort that goes into producing a hand-drawn map. And some of these, although they're not, not original, well, one of them is an original, but they are, some of them are just so beautifully crafted that it is, it is artwork. Mm. What sort of uh, EDI equality, diversity and inclusion services do you offer uh, and how can people access them? Right. Well, basically, we offer workplace solutions on everything to do with diversity and inclusion. And we we give seminars, we give pro we, we develop programs with companies and, and government um, agencies and professional support programs, which are really, really important. Um, we have found a lot of corporate uh, clients coming to us because their staff are either coming back to work, having been off for 18 months, working at home perhaps, and the whole mental stress uh, around that means that they might need a little bit of coaching, they might need a little bit of, of consulting with a counsellor and um, that is that's what we do as well and then we just do general EDI training and um, when we started out most of our team and our directors are part of the LGBTQ community so we very much focused on that it, was, it wasn't even that we, fo we focused on it but rather the LGBTQ um, people within corporate and government came to us asking for training. So that sort of training is 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 one of our more popular, um, if you like, streams. And we really do enjoy, because we're so familiar and so knowledgeable about the, the LGBTQ community, we can deliver trainings. And we all our trainings are delivered bespoke. So we talk to the clients and we say, exactly what you want and we will organize or we will tailor a program around what exactly what you want again what is uh, under your rainbow need going forward to enable you to continue making an impact and reaching those that need the services well certainly the therapy side of things is expanding continuously and we're looking for more therapists we're looking for bigger premises um, because we will go back to face to face. I think face to face. Now, I'm not a I'm not a therapist or a counselor, but from what I understand, face to face can help a lot of people. In that, you miss a lot of the 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 body movements and the and the facial expressions. Even on Zoom, it's more difficult to interact and to to build up a relationship with your counselor. So we will going forward, be looking for bigger premises and more therapists because the clients are out there. The people are out there. They desperately need help. With everything and thanks for joining us, Philippa. And, uh, uh, and I wish to you continued success and please check out undertherainbow.ie to learn more. And here's a little VT. Uh, I think. I started doing my gap show with a like-minded group in 2019. It's, just, it's been so fun and it's been really nice to do it in a space where I don't have to expect myself as a trans person. It's basically all focused on the young queer experience. Never meant to cause you any sorrow Never meant to cause you any pain Only one time I want to see you laughing Only want to see you laughing in the purple rain Purple rain, purple rain See you beating in 
I never wanted to be your weekend lover. Only want to be some kind of friend. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I can never steal you from another. It's such a shame our friendship had to win. Purple rain, purple rain. Purple rain, purple rain. A purple rain, purple rain. Only want to see you underneath the purple rain. Honey, I know. Time we all reached out for something new That means you too You say I want a leader But you can't seem to make up your mind Let me close it Let me guide you to the purple rain Purple rain, purple Purple rain, purple rain. A purple rain, purple rain. I only wanna see you underneath the purple rain. That's not an easy song to sing. I hope you enjoyed it. That was, of course, Prince, uh, the Purple Maestro, Prince's 80s classic, Purple Rain. Uh, so let me read a few messages coming in tonight. Love these postcards. Love poetry, music, Mags Frost. Men's Shed. If Jack set up one, it would be called Luke, Man shed. Luke Men's Shed. Okay, very good, very good. Um, looking forward to see you in Mount Errigal on Friday night. Maybe you might climb Mount Errigal when you're up. Oh, yeah, I'm up in Letterkenny at the weekend, Caroline O'Sullivan. 
Good on you. Featuring Men's Sheds, brilliant initiative, Elizabeth Ryan. We also have a postcard from Instagram from Geraldine McGrath. Hi, Jack. My story starts when I lost my job as activities coordinator in a local nursing home just as COVID hit. I injured my back, so on top of dealing with lockdown, I was faced with never working full time again. It was just my daughter and I, and she was struggling between studying for the Leaving Cert and no contact with friends, friends which took its toll on her. Uh, but she was glad to have me home. As time went on, she struggled mentally. I got her Brezzy's book, Me and My Mate Jeffrey. This really changed her life. A huge thanks to Brezzy and the help his book and podcasts have given people. His song, Pounding the Pavement, encouraged her to start running. Then, uh, the get out of jail free card, no leaving cert, yes, which was a great relief for her. She's now in secondary year studying veterinary nursing, and I'm a proud mammy, good on her. Uh, myself, well, in the midst of all this, I did some art to keep busy, and while listening to Jack LCDs, even better. <laughs> I even caught Emer singing along to Chocolate Eyes. You really kept me going, and lots of others saying, which are Saturday night gigs, we danced around our kitchens for one night of the week and forgot our problems. Forever grateful to you for that, and I'm grateful for you for tuning in. Uh, thanks for taking the time to read my story, Jer. Thanks a million. And P.S., I get to see my son for New Year's. Haven't seen him in a year and a half. Wow, he's in Germany. Well, hello to him too. Thanks a million, Geraldine. Now, another one of Wheels' charity partners is, in, is Gashka. And I got to meet two young artists, Robert and Beth, whose work is included in Gashka Like-Minded Project, which in turn became part of Queer Mind, Body and Soul exhibition, which is still running in the National Gallery of Ireland and was Ireland's first LGBTQ plus exhibition and was curated by Kate Trinan. So have a look at this. Hi Kate, how you doing? Hey, how's it going? Can you tell us a little bit about the exhibition? We're currently standing in Queer Mind, Body and Soul. It is a collection of artworks by 16 young LGBTQIA plus people, gender non-conforming people and their allies. It's you know, a really amazing youth project, but also the first of its kind in the gallery, focusing on LGBTQIA plus experiences. Yeah. Well, that's what's a, a fascinating is the variety of stuff. You know, yeah. it's not just painting, it's not no, just it's... visual. You've got some design here as well. Uh, so it really came from them, mm -hmm. and we just facilitated putting it all on the walls. All right, yeah. And tell us a little bit about Goshka. Yeah, Goshka is our partner uh, in this project. They've been absolutely incredible to work with. They're one of three Apollo Project partners that we have in the gallery. And the Apollo Project is a strand of events in our programming that focuses on young people. It's inspired by young people, it's run by young people and for young people. The, all the participants, the 16 of them, worked towards their Goshka Awards. So some of them were working towards bronze, some mm -hmm. silver, some gold. And their involvement in the project and creating their artworks went towards their awards. Uh, so they really, they pulled it out of the bag. We had all of the friends and family in and like different intervals so they could have a look and have a look around it was so beautiful we all cried it was magic ah beautiful <laughs> beautiful and is there any particular piece of work catching anybody's attention that you... i mean yeah there's loads there's this piece by victoria it is a series of over 100 origami hearts oh. and each strand is color coded so it matches one of the LGBTQA ah. plus flags. And then inside each origami heart is a little word or message. Oh. And throughout the run of the exhibition, Victoria is gonna come in and unfold the hearts. So by the time we're closing on the 17th of October, most of these should be open for oh, people right. to read. So it's like a flower blooming. Exactly, wow, yeah, yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. Well, thanks a million, Kate. I'm looking forward to just browsing the rest of the stuff and I would invite everybody down to see this. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, thank you so much, and I hope everyone comes and enjoys it. Absolutely. Hi, Beth. How are you doing? Hi. I'm good. I am absolutely stunned at your stuff. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank you. I'm very <laughs> moved by the whole thing, I have to say. How do you, you know, get into a creative mind? How do, how do you do that? Or do you just, does it naturally come to you? Um, well, I mean, I guess it helped that it was something that I was passionate about. We were talking about themes and topics that like meant a lot to me, so I could get into it really easily because it was it felt important to me. Such a beautiful variety of stuff. Are any that you've been drawn to? Well, I love them all. I think Bevan's piece, uh, Den the End, the Four Portraits. We'll have a look at it, yeah. I ah, think are fabulous. Wow, they are fabulous, yeah. aren't they? 
when I saw it all up on the walls, I was like, oh my God, wow, like this is what people have been doing yeah. behind the scenes of the Zoom calls over the last few months. Like yes. I was unaware of like the amount of talent. I, but it must have been quite cathartic for you to do that, obviously, yeah. yeah. And especially like with the topic of my piece, um, I talk a lot about um, the rates of homophobia and bullying mm. um, experienced by uh, young queer people in Ireland. And mm. I think that um, to, to voice a lot of that and mm. to voice a lot of the anger and emotions that went along with that, mm. that was very cathartic and very, um, it's not something I thought I'd ever be able to do, especially on a stage like this. Yeah, and that's it. And that's exactly what art is about. Hey Robert, this is absolutely amazing. Can you tell us a little bit about it? So this is my piece, it's called Blood. It is a piece in protest of the current MSM blood ban in this country. Um, currently, a, a man who has sex with men must wait 12 months in order to donate blood. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just, it's a waste of blood. Yeah. So it, my piece is highlighting how long a year actually is. So it, it's really visually depicting that 12 months and showing you that it's going to waste. Is it real blood? Uh, no, it's fake blood. Don't worry, don't yeah. worry. It's fake blood. <laughs> you'll be a bit lightheaded. You'll be a bit lightheaded after giving that much. <laughs> I started doing my Gashka with the like-minded group in 2019. It just, it's been so fun and it's been really nice to do it in a space where I don't have to explain myself as a trans person. Are you going to continue to create? Are you inspired to? I think it's really important to do art and doing art and doing activism. Mm -hmm. Arct artivism, I think yeah, it's yeah. called. How do I say that? Artivism. Art artivism. I love it. Um, I, love it. I, I think it's really important because art is powerful. Mm. It affects people. I think you nailed it on this one anyway. <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> is, there, is there a particular piece here that you're drawn to that you fit? You want I, to show I, us? I quite like this one by A. Yeah. So um, this fantastic, is yeah. very fantastic. I just think it's so cool. Mm. I, I, it's just so, like, it's just so funky. Yeah. And, um, I the love the little rainbow brain brain, inside yeah. that. Rainbow I love brain. it. It's yeah. so yeah, funky. I want to push the button oh, like, oh my god, where did you get them done? <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, thanks a million for letting the show us around and congratulations on the piece and well done and good luck to you and everything in the future. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. for Mr. Derry Cronin on the piano, ladies and gentlemen. Siobhan Buckley on the harp. And Roisin Dunahue here on the violin. La da, la da 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 da. La da 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 da. La da. La da, 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 la da. Dance me to your beauty with a burning violin. Dance me through the panic. Look at it safely yeah. Lift me with your olive branch Be my homeward dove And dance me Till the end of life And dance me Till the end of love Life la 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 Beauty 
when the witnesses are gone let me feel you moving like they do in babylon show me slowly what i only know limits of and dance me to the end of love and dance me to the end of love la 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 Touch me with your naked hand or touch me with your glove and dance me to the end of love and dance me to the end of la 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 Classic Dance Me to the End of Love. A bit of a tango at the end for everybody at home. We're getting cards in here, getting some lovely cards in during the week from various schools all over the place. There's one from Australia, it seems, and uh, pictures of dinosaurs. There's a dinosaur. So lots of people sending in their postcards from the edge and beyond the edge. Uh, evening, Jack from Somerset. Have really enjoyed all your shows. I've watched you all through the pandemic. Thank you. Kept me going, Jay Polly. Hello from Southwest France. Uh, Shiva Martin. We'll, we'll have to. Well, that, that, that your name will uh, bring us on to the to the next uh, section. Now, please welcome our guest Eva Cantwell to tell us more about her movement. Starts with a name. And uh, can, can you? <laughs> I need my glasses, John. Uh, dear, oh, sorry, I'm springing <laughs> it on you. I think that's a scythe. <laughs> scythe, is it? There you go. Well, uh, can you tell us a little bit about Swan and start to the name and what's it, what it's all about? we Will do. First, just want to say thanks for having me on. Love the performance, love the show, and thanks for getting us through the pandemic with your with your regular show. And thank you, so. and thanks for lending us your husband, Derek, <laughs> playing keyboards. He's not bad. He's not bad at He's all. He's not bad. Um, so, it starts with a name. It's a cultural diversity movement, and the whole premise is 
how can you belong in a place where people can't say your name? It's something pretty basic. We've, we've all done it, yeah. Yeah, but it's it, oh, not, not always easy. Nobody mm. intentionally, well, actually, we, we'll get on to that, but mm. people generally don't intentionally <laughs> mispronounce names. But it's a real sign of respect if you take the time to, to learn how to say somebody's name. So our call to action, it's really, really simple. It's on your email signature, on your social profiles. Put the pronunciation of your name and use the hashtag starts with a name. Mm -hmm. And you'll see at, at, at the end a, a video where you'll get some inspiration. You know, you can be creative. Um, the video we'll see has 70 colleagues of, of mine. I work for an Irish founded IT services company, version one, and 70 of my colleagues, we are, we're seeing a shortened version, but on the website you'll see the extended version. And they got together and have given the pronunciation of their name written out. And what I love about it is the creativity and the, the humanity of it. And with some, some great you know, ideas for expressing your name, we've got Maeve like wave, Kyle like smile. Uh, we're a, a footballing family um, um, and uh, Liverpool supporters in, in our house. Um, and I go for Aoife like FIFA without the Aoife F. like FIFA, FIFA, yeah. And you must have experienced this a lot with, with your name. Yeah, it, mine's... It's spelled A-O-I-B-H-E. Yeah, now that's, that's not my fault. Uh -huh. but, uh, yes, it is. Loads of vowels, not the easiest name. And I've been called some sort of interesting combinations of names in, in, in my time. So, yeah, I guess if, if you make it easy for people, um, it saves that kind of, you know, there you are reading out a card and then mm. suddenly you're going, oh, how do I say the name? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so if you give it to people up front, you can kind of say, s save those moments. When in doubt, mumble. <laughs> or smile. But it's, it is hard. <laughs> I mean, everybody suffers from it and it's not intentional. I mean, people don't mean to. Uh, but sometimes they, they'll, um, uh, you know, uh, skip around it or intentionally not yeah. say your name. And then also some people, you know, maybe I'm not that polite, so, <laughs> so I'll talk up. But some people won't talk up. And through this whole process, I've come across a number of people whose boss has been saying their name incorrectly for forever. Wow. And then somebody says, well, their name's actually pronounced this. Oh, no, no, it's not actually it is so if you put it on your email or on your social profile it leaves sort of no no room for error so. yeah and and the pandemic uh, kind of helped you progress yeah yeah so so starts with the name has been around uh, kind of early 2019 when i pitched it to the version one ceo he was totally on board and we did a, a video internally but it was really only in the pandemic that it sort of took flight mm. and that to me was was because of, kind of two things and you, you, you've talked about it here on the show. It's like this sort of pause button. It wasn't, <laughs> we didn't get a choice. Mm -hmm. um, now, it didn't seem like a pause necessarily. For, for me, I was working full time with two kids being, uh, supposedly being homeschooled. Um, but somehow there was this space, this kind mm -hmm. of fertile space that people had. Um, so a group of us got together and we had artwork and the, the song that you'll hear um, at, at, at the end, you know, that was composed, custom composed by a young artist called Kira Mayo. Uh, we had, um, there's a, a poem, a great website. So it was just this, people I guess just had this space. And then the other thing they had was sort of a conviction that it mattered. Suddenly overnight with the pandemic, we all switched to a rem remote world. Mm -hmm. You couldn't pull somebody aside in the hallway and say, how does your one A-O-I-B-H-E say, say her name? Uh, you're on a Zoom call, I know people would say, oh, you know, I really wanted to ask a question, but I didn't know how to say the person's name. Right, yeah, yeah. It's kind of fundamental. Mm. Um, so it's, and it's really at the first point of contact that you want to be able to say the name. So if you kind of serve it up to people, it makes that sort of initial contact more, sort of more meaningful. I yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's Gas Online obviously has, has made us have to to, to learn people's name. and if anybody out there on the streams if you have a name that uh, people can't pronounce properly please let us know on the comments and uh, send us the phonetic way to say it maybe just to help out uh, like Sive there you know I, I, I bottled it when I had to say <laughs> that one um, and of course uh, your mascot or your Swan is your mascot and uh, how did that come about and I believe you have a, a poem maybe you'll do for us too I might um, so I came up with starts with a name mm -hmm. But I didn't come up with Swan. Um, 
in fact, when somebody talked to me about SWAN, it took me a while to register because right. I just wasn't Good. as cool at coming up with acronyms. Um, but when I did put two and two together, it really resonated with me. And it took me a while to kind of figure out why, and I kind of had to, to ruminate. But in Irish mythology and, and literature, we have lots of swans, children of Lear, wild swans are cool. And what I really love about swans and the swan story is it is a story of migration, just like the Irish people migrating. And when you migrate somewhere, you, you want to feel like you belong. Um, so I wrote a poem about that, that kind of feeling. So Can you do it first, please? I will. I'll, do you want all 24 verses? or uh, uh, Maybe, maybe the, the edited version. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see. Migrating from a foreign land with your hooping name in hand, taking shelter on our shores, we have not seen your kind before. Drawn to our humble clime, your glowing plume catches our eye. Weathering winter on our waters, we embrace you, sons and daughters. United, we'll be warm all winter. We will pass through flood and storm. We will gather close together. What's mine is yours. This is our home. Hooper swans in our core, free to wander on all shores, free to fly, free to roam. Call me by my name. It brings me home. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, I, th I think it's a great initiative. I really do. Because it's so, it's an everyday thing, you know. It's it's mm. it's it's and it is important. And there's not as bad as people uh, getting your name wrong. And I believe you have a connection to Kamala Harris. Am I saying that right? <laughs> uh, well, to, I had to go look it up. So it apparently it's comma like the punctuation mark and mm. la Kamala. Um, yeah. I would love to have a connection to yeah. her. Uh, one of the early uh, signatories of the Swan Charter is the law firm DLA Piper. And uh, Kamala Harris's husband worked there. He's now on a leave of absence since she took office. And um, so I'm hoping we'll get, a, we'll get word to her uh, there. But if anybody watching knows her and can get a message, um, would really appreciate it. But I'm gonna have a, have a quote here that mm. was actually um, brought to my attention by the founder signatory of the Swan Charter, uh, Harrow Council in London, um, and by the chair of the Black Lives Matter group. And um, this is Kamala Harris in October 2020 talking about um, your name. So it is the first gift that a child, usually when they enter the earth, receives from their family. It's usually informed by tradition and love and the hope and aspiration the family has for that child. It is something precious and sacred and it's part of their identity. And when I see people fighting for the right for that to be respected and treated in a dignified way, I applaud and salute that. So, like to me, she would definitely be on board with Swan. What's What's sad to me is her name has purposely been mispronounced, mm -hmm. um, even by a senator. You know, she she was in would have been a colleague of hers in in the Senate um, at a at Trump rally. He purposely in um, I think it was October 2020 mis mispronounced her name, and I hadn't really understood the kind of the the sort of the, the depth um, of that sort of lack, lack of respect. Mm. Um, and on the startswithaname.net website, we have uh, a clip from the Amber Ruffin show. And this, uh, I'll, I'll quote from it, but I would urge people to look at it. Um, it was an education for, for me, and it's a, uh, I'll quote here, one of the only things black people really gained control of in the history of this country is what we name our children. When black folks got off slave ships, white people renamed us. So when we finally got some freedom, we took our names back, we took our power back. Um, so there is real power in a name and just simply, as I said, putting your pronunciation and the hashtag starts with a name can make a difference. Brilliant, well thanks a million. Uh, thanks to Eva. and now let's uh, have a look at this video and see a bit more about the movement.
Sphinx right in the eye Just to think of you In Sahara Skies all in you blue Thought I'd seen it all Till I saw you Thought I'd seen it all Till I saw you the wars that were lost at a priceless cost. Thought I found it all, but I found nothing at all. Till I saw you. Empires rise and empires burn Another day the wheel it turns Silly oceans, red and blue Gobi Desert, Atlas Mountains So all days you Thought I'd seen it all Till I saw you Thought I'd seen it all Till I saw you All the wars that were fought For priceless cost Thought I saw it all But I saw nothing at all Till I saw you Thought I'd 
That was uh, one of my own tunes, Till I Saw You, <coughs> from the Magic Days album. You can get it at jacklukeman.com. And don't forget, the tickets are available now for the Tree Arena gig. Take a look at this. I'm the king of so There you have it, and uh, some messages coming in here. Forgive me as I read my phone. Uh, Thomas Quinn, on the subject of diversity and inclusion, my favorite ever quote is from Aud Lo Aud Lo Audrey Lord. Sorry, I'm getting the name wrong. It's not our differences that divide us. It's our inability to recognize, accept, and celebrate those differences. Love that quote since I first heard it. We all have the same cares and worries. And thanks, Thomas. Thanks for all the, the fun comments you're putting up. And thanks a million to Anne-Marie McGregor also uh, for putting up some stuff I want from last week. Anne-Marie McGregor in Glasgow. I started a new job this week, reinventing myself of sorts. Going to support GP patients to uh, link to local resources. I'm excited. So uh, again, some good ones in here. Let me see what else I have. Uh, Anna like banana. That's me from Anna Thomas. I agree, my son's Lu Louis, was it <laughs> Louis gets Louis? Louis gets Louis. He's always correcting. That's from Leslie. So it's Louis, not Louis. About Gashka, super art is so powerful. That's from Michelle O'D. The earth without art is just eh. Uh. There's Thomas Quinn again. And uh, there's so many great ones here. I think this one, I don't know where this is from. This was a postcard that was sent in. Everyone said the world had stopped. That just didn't feel right to me. Then I remembered, reculiar pour moi satur. We hadn't stopped or paused. We were drawing back to leap. That's so good. Um, I tightened my laces and thought, jump, baby, jump. That's from James J. Lyon and Greystones. So there you have it, folks. Lots of fantastic cards. I have so many to read here, and uh, we'll, we'll maybe uh, take a pictures of them all together and maybe put them up online so you can read them all. And thanks for everybody commenting here on the stream also. It's a great crack reading this stuff. And thanks for all your kind comments about Till I Saw You. I'll also be in Letterkenny on Friday night, and I'll be in Cork in Cypress Avenue on Sunday night. Check me out there. Uh, it's been a great show this week, so thanks again 
all for uh, watching. And next week, I'll be joined by Irish ballerina uh, Monica Lockman. And it's all about youth on hold. So please tune in as it's the last show of the series and keep spreading the news about the show. And uh, thanks to everybody on the crew here uh, helping me out here uh, at another avenue. And uh, so it's good night from me. And in case you forgot, here's how you get in touch next week. Hi, this is Jack Lukeman and I'm looking for your pandemic stories for my new web show, Postcards from the Edge. Please send me your poems, songs, messages, videos, or even just a request digitally. Tag your content online with hashtag JackLPostcards or send a message to any of the accounts shown here. To post your postcards free of charge, send them to Postcards from the Edge, P.O. Box 13420, Free Post, FDN 7530, Dublin 2.
blue day wrapped up in May hail I septic city singing one glance I was caught in your trance this kingdom inside started growing whoa I've been so hungry to love. Come on, let's just have a wicked way to say. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Touche, there's nothing I can say, y'all. Cupid lips have spoken like some kind of melody. Sweet rhymes in out of time. Yeah, the windows are down and the door. Wrap around your waist, oh yeah Cause I've been so hungry for love, y'all Let's just have a wicked way to say Oh, 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 Septic city singing. Today.